Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for your attendance. I'm really excited to be here, to be honest. <laughs> very, very much excited. You're going to hear it in my voice when I start. So in this session, we're going to talk about mobile, the mobile ecosystem, and how to build a winning mobile strategy. But I want to start off with a question for you guys, and I would love your cooperation. So the question is on board. How many hours were spent on mobile devices around the world, worldwide, last year? And, and, any guesses? <laughs> any guesses? Throw numbers. I don't mind. That's OK. We're not judging. We're just here to throw numbers. That's OK if you don't. Okay. I promise I'll give the answer by, by the end of it. How much? Trillion hours. Trillion hours. No? OK. So the exact number, well, not the exact, but approximately the number was 3.8 trillion hours. Very close, by the way. Nice. I wouldn't guess it. So 3.8 trillion hours worldwide. That's how much time consumers spent on mobile devices. Yes, that's right. It's that high. And then we have this great sentence. People devote third of waking time on mobile apps. Third. That equates to almost five hours per day on the mobile. Taking the device, five hours a day, I'm on that, doing this. That's how it works. I'm going to give some more numbers just to you know, make it as gigantic as it is. So 230 billion times people downloaded apps in 2021. 230 billion times. And now let's talk money. Are flowing to the application stores, both App Store and Google Play, every minute in 2021. So by the time I started talking and up until now, $320,000 just made their way through the application stores. So my name is Adil Mizrahi, and I'm here to show you how to build a winning mobile strategy for your business. I will introduce myself a bit. I'm a senior, uh, uh, dev uh, senior mobile developer at Cloudinary. I've been developing apps for over 10 years. I write technical blogs at my spare time because I believe that through teaching, I'm actually understanding the material better. I was a lecturer for mobile system design at the university in Israel. And lastly, and I'm really proud of this, I'm a gamer. So if anyone want to talk video games, I'm the guy. So before we get started, I want to entice you. Why mobile? Why is this important? Why do we build apps? Why do we go and build mobile webs? Why is this ecosystem so critically important for your business? And we're going to, we're going to take this graph, for example. This graph shows the internet, the internet traffic worldwide in 2022. And the dark blue line at the top shows the mobile, the mobile internet traffic. Underneath it, we have the light blue one that shows the desktop internet traffic. And we can see that the mobile surpassed the desktop and hit a peak of more than 60% at some point. I don't know if you know that, but people actually use their phones to travel the internet and browse it, not their desktop. No one, no one actually opens a desktop every day and uses it unless you're an engineer like me. And this is extremely important, and there are many reasons to that. Devices are getting stronger in terms of battery life and image quality, and the internet is getting better and better. We're getting 5G and not the 3G we had and when the mobile device didn't even move. We were waiting for browsers to open up. I want you to take these two graphs. The left one, Apple's App Store, from 2017 to 2021 in revenue. You can see the consistent growth. The right one is Google Play. Again, 2016 to 2021, consistent growth. The Apple's App Store hit a peak in 2021 of more than $85 billion. Unbelievable. The Google Play fell short to $48 billion, but still, insane numbers. And those numbers that I'm showing are coming from your applications, from subscriptions that you're offering, from consumables and non-consumables. E-commerce. In the following graph, we can see the growth of the e-commerce genre in mobile only. And we can see the growth from 2016 to 2021 up to the crazy number of $3.56 billion in e-commerce only. A growth of 73%, almost 73% in five years. 
Again, this is due to many factors, because people feel that their phones are personal and they feel comfortable holding a paying method on their phone. And we're going to talk about that, because mobile devices are becoming a popular channel to do online shopping. With many users are making their purchases on their mobile device and prefer to do it on their mobile device. If you are offering a seamless, good shopping experience, you can enjoy and benefit from increased sales. And customer loyalty, of course, because they will come back and buy from you again because they enjoyed the first experience. Apple Pay and Google Wallet make it easier to buy and safer. It's there on your phone. You don't need to do anything. You just point your phone and it works. I've been here to London for the past three days. I've been you know, traveling around in the underground. And I didn't need to do anything. I was just going to the gate, putting my phone down. Everything opens up. No need to buy a ticket. No need to point anything. No need to talk to anyone. Just go. Put your phone and go. It worked. And I was amazed to see how easy it is. In China, it's even crazier, actually. They buy anything with their phones. They don't hold any paying methods. We all know this icon, I hope. The flame, orange and red. I don't see any signs, so maybe I'm the only one. Tinder is a remarkable success. Over 5 million downloads per month. Over $65 million dollars every month that they're making, which makes to over 700 millions in annual revenue. Think of the numbers, 700 million per year, every year. Tinder started 11 years ago, 2012 as an iOS app, 2013 as an Android app. Only by 2017 did they move to be a desktop app, but with limited features. They said, we don't need everything. Everyone's using it on mobile. Why the hell do we need it on desktop? So Tinder is a classic use case of a mobile first. They went and built apps and then moved it to desktop. And not only that, they took the entire dating genre from desktop, you used to have all those websites, and moved it to mobile. And now we see all those dating apps sprouting like Bumble, Hinge, and more. So I, now that I actually explained it, we know the importance of mobile world and the growth it, is, it has been having, the consistent growth in the past few years, I want to show you why a bad mobile experience can harm your business, actually. So many companies tell themselves, look, I already invested a lot in a mobile website. Let's just adjust it to mobile. But then it's not 100% mobile compatible. And users will leave. Why they will leave? Because it's not fitting for them. It's not fast enough. It's not loading. It's not easy to use. I can't navigate it. And then I'm having a bad experience which leads to a poor perception of your business. If you are offering a bad experience to users, they will leave, and they will not engage with you outside the mobile app. If your app is difficult to use and slow to load, people will most likely abandon their purchases, even if they put something to their cart. If I can't move to my cart and I can't finish that purchase, I will leave. I will not stay there. And this is part of the, user, sorry, the mobile user experience that you are offering if your app is difficult to navigate, or displays poorly on mobile devices, people are more likely to abandon it and look for alternatives. And not only that, this experience will also damage your brand reputation, and users are likely to move to competitors. And talking about competitors, if your competitors are offering a better mobile experience, users are more likely to choose their products and services over yours, leading to a comp competitive disadvantage. And this can lead to a loss in revenue as well, because people will go and buy your competitors' products. The competition in the mobile world is getting fierce, and more and more companies are moving their business to mobile platforms. If you consider yourself top at your business, top at your field, you must have a good mobile experience. And we all know this search engine, the most used worldwide. Yeah, Google said so. Google search engine algorithm will actively penalize websites that are not considering mobile experience. To put it simply, Google will slap your website down in rankings. If your web, if your web is not responsive and not showing well on a mobile device, and these penalties are only getting stricter if you didn't feel them by now, you will soon. In addition to that, I want to add this. Maybe you didn't know that. But more than 50% of all searches on Google are being made through mobile devices. People open their phone every day. They don't open their desktop every day to make searches. Now we're moving back a bit to native. So there's no real way to determine how Google or Apple uh, make the rankings on the stores. They never publish this. 
But there are many factors that can contribute to this, like number of downloads, the ratings and reviews, the amount of time that users actually spend on your app, new features, consistent updates, and bug fixes. All of this and more will determine your ranking on the store. And there's one thing I want to add, an app with a score that is less than four will most likely will not be downloaded. Why? Because low score rating on the store can indicate to potential users that your app might have issues or does not meet their expectations. And this is very important. Your score is super important on the store. So now that we talked about how bad experience can impact you, I want to I wanna, I wanna show you how can you actually determine if the experience, the mobile experience that you're giving your users is any good. And we're going to talk next about metrics, things that you can measure and monitor in your app or web that it will help you determine the entire mobile experience. And as it was stated by the legendary Peter Drucker, what gets measured gets improved. So the first thing we're going to talk about is bounce rate, the percentage of users that visit your app or web and left after viewing only one page. This can indicate to a poor mobile experience or irrelevant content. So make sure you research and investigate those and understand why users just left your app after viewing only one page. They came for a reason. They probably looked for something, but just bounced after one page. Something went wrong on the way, and that's where you need to find out what happened. This metric can also be measured with time on site, the amount of time that people spent on your app or website. The more time that they spend on your website or app, the more likely they will take a desired action that we want them to take. And this will most likely end to retention as well. And we will talk about retention in a few slides. Conversion rate, and this is one of the most important ones. Conversion rate is actually uh, the percentage of users that takes a desired action, something that we want them to do, such as buying a product, put something into their cart, or subscribe to a service. This metric can help evaluate the effectiveness of your mobile experience in driving user behavior. Measuring this is extremely important to understand where you fall. For example, I will give you one, a call to action button that is not presented, not visible. Maybe it's too small, maybe it's crooked, the font is too small, and people are not clicking it, will lower your conversion rate. And you need to pay attention to that. That's why this measurement is so important, and everyone should track this. And I said, and we will talk about retention. Retention is the percentage of users that return to your app or web after their initial visit, this metric can indicate a level of user loyalty and the satisfaction of users from your mobile experience. This, of course, depends on the type of service that your app or web is actually giving. But high retention usually means that people like your app, your experience, and will likely recommend it to others. Yes, and we need to talk to our users. Asking users for feedback through service or in-app mechanism is extremely important and can provide you valuable information about your mobile experience. It's actually a way for us developers to communicate with our customers, ask them and see their needs, and ask them what they like or don't like about our app or web. Funnels, I don't know many, if many of you know this, but as a developer, I got into the business side of it and I built a lot of funnels. So funnels is actually tracking your users with events. You need to make sure that your developers need to understand that they need to send events about screens, about actions, about specific processes, so you can actually take those use platforms such as Mixpanel or Flurry to build funnels, see where they drop, maybe between screens, maybe something bad happened there. Maybe you have a crash that actually caused this funnel to drop. Be sure to track it between versions. Maybe you changed something and something failed on the way. And as I said before, the rating and reviews that users leave on your, on, on your store page is extremely important. So be sure to answer your users' concerns in the reviews themselves. This actually might bring back the user to the app. Let them know if an issue was fixed between versions. This will, of course, increase retention if users are coming back and might ev even get the users to improve their score, which is extremely important because, as we said before, the score rate the ratings on the store page actually determines oh, at least it's part of what determines your rankings on the store as well. And crashes. Happens. Nothing is perfect. <laughs> I've never seen an app that didn't crash. So be sure to 
to track your crash rate using mechanisms such as Firebase, Crash Analytics, or Sentry. Those are the two that I can think of, but there are many more. It's extremely important to understand if you have a spike of crashes between versions that you release to be able to fix them quickly because, as we said, customers expect best experience when they are downloading an app to their phone. A crash can arm your business in everything that we just talked about, conversion, retention, and more. Application performance, and before I talk about this slide, I want to do a little demonstration. So uh, I'm going to give a day-to-day -day scenario that you all probably experienced, and then we'll talk about it. So I'm going to put here this for a second. So I'm going to my favorite coffee place. I'm ordering my latte or my tea, depends on your flavor. I'm taking out my phone, open up my news app, the one that I like the most. When you get to load up, oh, there we go. Oh, the first article seems very interesting to me, so I'm going to click it. Clicking out down the, the article, and it opens up. Wow, there's a video. Don't even need to read anything. I'm going to put my headphones or my AirPods. Depends on what you use. OK, clicking the play button. And I'm seeing loading animation. It's buffering. Maybe it's a faulty video. Fine, fine. Let's close it down, look for another. So I'm, doing, I'm, I'm closing down the article. And I'm doing this famous motion. I'm starting to scroll down. And suddenly, instead of thumbnails, I'm seeing blanks and I can't scroll down anymore, and no new content is coming. So that's application performance, and specifically, you need to measure the time it takes your app or web to load on mobile devices. This is extremely important. Slow loading times can lead to frustration of users and abandonment. They will leave if it takes too long. And this is no longer the 90s. Text only apps want to do. An app needs to be rich in media, images, videos, animations. All of these need to be in your app. They need to be captivating. They need to deliver a great experience so a user wants to come back. And I want to give a small example. A loading a lot of media, actually, if you have a lot of images in your app, can be extremely challenging with a bad connection. But you, as the one who built the app, still need to play through that. And that's not easy. And I'm going to give a few more examples in the next slides so why I talked about time to load and why it's so important. So 100 milliseconds, yes, 100 milliseconds in page load can result in 7% reduction in conversion. Again, by conversion, I mean that the user took something and put it into its cart or subscribed to a service. Take that, multiply it by 10, although it's not a linear connection, but still multiply it by 10, one second. One second of delay can lead to almost 70% reduction in conversion rate. Yes, this is according to a study by Akamai. One more, one second delay can cost 20% drop in traffic, which means that less users are coming. Impacts retention that we talked about, impacts engagement because less users are actually traveling through the app. One second delay can also lead to 11% decrease in page views. Page views, how many pages actually customers viewed in your app? The more pages they view, the more likely they will take a desired action that we want, such as, sorry about that, such as, such as buying a product or subscribing to a service. And lastly, one second of delay can lead to 60% decrease in customer satisfactions. Again, ratings on the store and feedback of users and mouth to mouth when I'm telling my colleagues about a new app. That's a problem. All of these slides that we've just seen are according to a Google study that was. So we are Cloudinary, and we are, help you, we are here to help you improve your mobile experience. I want to show you next a few ways that Cloudinary can help you improve the mobile experience in your app or web. So before we mentioned the bad connection and how challenging it can be with a bad connection to get a lot of media. So I'm here to show you how to still achieve a good result with a bad connection, and that's by reducing the asset size. Uh, size sorry. And we can do it in a few ways. We can start by reducing the resolution, the width and height of the asset. Since we're presenting on a mobile, we don't need 4K images, especially if we're showing thumbnails or an image feed. Secondly, we can take the quality and compress the image, but still get a good-looking image, but because, again, we're presenting it on a mobile. We're not using huge screens. And lastly, we can deliver the right format for each platform. iOS, hick, Apple were so proud of it when they you know, released that format because it was rendered on hardware and was rendering super fast. Android can use WebP, and even a new version can use AVIF as well. All of those things that I just mentioned, dimensions, sorry, dimensions, format, and quality, will make for lighter assets. Assets that can be easier to receive, even with a bad connection. 
don't know how many familiar with the next term, but content delivery network or for shorts CDN is basically it's an extremely important mechanism that Cloudinary offers. This basically means there's a grid of servers all around the world that once you deliver your assets there for the first time, they are being cached, which means that the second user that asked for that same asset will get it much faster since the distance between the user and the CDN server is much shorter than the user and the main endpoint that actually delivers those assets to the CDN. And as we mentioned before, some of you might already have a website which presents those assets that we want to present on mobile as well, but desktop design is very different for mobile. The size of the assets may rise depends on the platform, and we need the same image, but in different sizes, and that's where Cloudinary comes in and can help you create optimized assets through URLs for each platform in terms of, as we said before, dimensions, quality, DPR, and more. Next, I want to give you a checklist of items, practical tools that you can do in your mobile app or web to help you improve your mobile experience. In the previous section, if you remember, we talked about measurements and things that you can do, and it's important to say it again. Measure. Measure what you can. Measure where your app or web fails. Measure where you fall. Measure where you lose your users. Measure conversion rate, how many times people downloaded your app, how many opened it for the first time, how many took a desired process that you wanted. Measure because it's really important and measure retention that we already mentioned and things like that and make sure you understand where you fall in terms of funnels that we talked about. Build those and understand where it goes down. Where can I improve? What can I improve? Maybe it's the design and we'll talk about that in a second. Define your goals. And be sure to be consistent about them. Give them time. Don't rush to conclusions. You'll be surprised how time can change what you think. And since we can't measure everything at once, be sure to define yourself real goals like, I want to improve conversion rate by 10%. I already have 15% retention rate after a week. I want to improve that and put it to 20%. Now ask yourself, how can I achieve it? What measurements am I missing? And if I at all, maybe I know everything I need to know. I just need to improve stuff now. Know your audience, understand your target audience and their, uh, sorry, and their mobile preferences and needs. This can help you tailor a mobile experience for their expectations and requirements. For example, if you are building an app for the elder people, make sure to give them what they need. A large font, for example, would be a good start. And if you're developing a game for kids, for example, make sure that the content really fits kids. And I'm not talking about the game, I'm talking about everything around it, the ads the fonts, the words, the phrasing, all of these, make sure that they fit your target audience. <laughs> and of course, choose your platform, because who doesn't? Decide which platform you're gonna target, iOS, Android, or both maybe. Consider the features and capabilities of each platform, as well as the demographics of your target audience. Check which OS is dominant in the target, so in the countries you are aiming for. We also showed before that the iOS store makes more money. That's also a factor to consider. And lastly, I encourage you to consider using cross-platform frameworks. They are pretty new, but think about it. We are building one code base for both apps. I'm talking about frameworks such as Flutter and React Native, Ionic. Think about that. That will lower development costs as well. And it is a good way to deliver the same app for both platforms quickly. We don't need developers for both. We can have one. Consider the following graph when you're thinking if I should build a native app or should I just stay with my mobile web, which I already have. This graph shows from 2018 to 2022, the way how much time people spend in native apps in red and mobile web in black. And we can see that users prefer to spend more time in native apps than in mobile webs. And as we said before, the more time people spend in your app or web, the more likely they will take a desired action. Performance was something we mentioned before, and this is extremely important. Prioritize the performance. Include techniques such as caching, code optimization, content delivery network, which is CDN. And as we mentioned, Cloudinary can help you with that. Make sure that your experience is responsive and that your mobile experience is good, because this can help you with slower networks, as we showed the example before, and even on older devices. A good 
performance can help everything we mentioned before, conversion, retention, and more. Because as we said, when people download an app or use a mobile web, they expect the best experience. When someone is downloading a native app, he expects it to be tailored for his phone. It should be perfect. OK. Bear with me here, because this is really important. Create a mobile first design. I know this sounds crazy. And many, many people told me, like, this is crazy. No. Because companies today still insist on creating a desktop first design, but that's not the way to go anymore. Welcome to the mobile first world. It's worth mentioning that we're about to enter a whole new world of responsiveness with foldable and expandable devices. So think about that if you have a mobile web, how responsive it should be when the device would actually be able to fold. And another thing that I want to encourage you to do is encourage your users to do mobile-related actions, such as sharing on social networks, because this will create exposure for your brand. Continuously test and optimize your mobile experience, test things such as the purchase screen, the images, the fonts, the phrasing, whatever you say there. Make sure to A-B test when you are, when you are, where you are seeing that you are not doing well. You will be surprised how different design can increase engagement, and it does. I used to do that a lot when I was working on my iOS app back in the days. Push notifications. Use push notifications to engage with your user and keep them informed about content, offers, and updates. Use segmentation and personalizations to deliver relevant notifications and drive engagement with push notifications. To be precise, push notification is an art. You need to find the right timing, and it's critical to find the right timing to send push notifications. I'm not talking here about WhatsApp. When we get a message, you know, and I was expecting that, and I just wrote him, and he's writing back, so of course I'm going to click that. We're talking about informing users of new features, new content, something that changed in my app. And the right time to do it is critical for users to actually engage with that notification. Localization, by the way, can also be an extra care. And be sure that your push notifications are not some general message, but they are personal and aimed for that person. And again, I'm going back to the stores. So when you release your app and you have your store page, make sure to put the right keywords. Make sure to put a great description with the keywords inside it so it will be easier for users to find your app when they are searching for it. Make sure to have a great screenshot. This is important. And not only that, if you're releasing to the App Store, make sure that you have an app preview, which is a video, because people today prefer video over static images. And if you have a tablet experience, make sure you have screenshots for those as well that really show the benefits of a tablet and the experience on a tablet. Localization. You should always be aiming to increase the audience and the, and the people that come to your app. Be sure to translate your application and store page, not only the application, but the store page. This is really important because not everyone is native English speakers. And be sure to translate to the countries you are aiming to get more people from. Check where your current users are coming from and give them translation to their language, because this can increase engagement and retention. I like that image. Can anyone spot the arrow, by the way? <laughs> yep, I always spelled wrong. That's right. So it's not always a sunny day. And unexpected things can and will happen in your app. Be sure to communicate that with your users. If a user suddenly steps into a zone with no internet, Make sure to tell him why that image won't load or this page will not open. And don't just throw general messages. Let them know specifically what happened. So this was a list of practical tools that you can take with you and implement in your application or web to improve your mobile experience. What we're going to do next is a small wrap up. We talked about the market is mobile. We show the consistent growth and why users actually prefer to use their phones for everything. We're talking from purchasing stuff to actually just browsing for social media. Everything is on the phone today. We gave a list of things that can harm your business if you're not performing them well. And one of the best was performance is critical. Make sure you have a great mobile performance. This is extremely important. And if you are not doing it well, people will run off.
And lastly, we gave a strategy checklist, a practical tools that you can take and implement in your app or web to improve the mobile experience. I want to thank you for taking the time and joining me. I hope you learned something from this session. If you have any question, my email is here on the board. You can feel free to send it to me, and I'll do my best to answer as fast as I can. Thank you very much.